Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Broken Sword 2 The Smoking Mirror. We're about to go on the hunt for two extra stones. But first we've got to cure Nico. Um, so we managed to pick up this cone last time. Now, it looks as though we've got to do something specifically with it here. Okay, so this, this might work. We've got to be careful not to spill it, but it doesn't look like it's going to make us do anything in particular. I mean, I would imagine that once we cure her, we'll head straight off for the other stones, but I don't know. Nico. Drink this. Drink this. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Literally word for word. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other stones? Yep. <laughs> yep. What other stones? What have you gotten me into now, Josh Tobot? The patient is sounding more like her old self already. <laughs> oh, okay. After flying across the Caribbean Sea. That was rather abrupt. Nico recovered quickly from her fever. Nice. To save time, we decided to split up and look for each stone independently. Ah, we're splitting up. I traced up. the pirate pitch to a remote island in the Caribbean. With the fortune he'd amassed from piracy, he'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing. Right, okay, so here we are. So Nico's going to go off in search of the other one then. Um, where did we get up to on this? I can't even remember. Uh, I can't remember if we read that. Okay, fine. Uh, one of the leads from the shaman pointed to an island called Ketch's Landing in the Caribbean. So I went down there to hunt the Eagle Stone while Nico went to London in search of the Jaguar Stone. London! It's going to be interesting to see what London's like in this game. Uh, right, so let us have a look around. Who is this? Man. Hello, man. Does the man have a name? Apparently he's just going to walk off. It's a little bit rude. Hi, is this Ketch's Landing? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Stobart. You're a surveyor, right? Mr. Bronson. And of course I'm a surveyor. Why the hell else would I have a theodolite? I don't right. know. Abby, maybe? Yeah, right. What brings you here, anyway? I'm searching for an ancient Mayan artifact. What is it? Some kind of jewel? No, it's obsidian. A uh, black stone with supposedly mystic powers. You're nuts. Uh, well, you never know. This is similar to the stone I'm looking for. What makes you think you'll find it here? Because when the stones were stolen in the 17th century... Hold it! The stones have been lost for 300 years? Yep. Approximately. And you're hoping to find them again? You're nuts. <laughs> you said that before. And why here? A wise old Indian shaman told me he saw the stones in a vision. Ha ha. That's rich. Listen, I got work to do, okay? Catch you later, Bronson. Alright, Bronson, you do whatever it is that you're doing. Um, looks like we can head up there. Let's have a look at these plans. Like a set of plans. Oh, can we do anything to this? Can we not break it or something because he's being obnoxious? No, but we can use it, it turns out. Uh, something's glistening there on the end of that pole. That's, uh, interesting. Alright, let's have a look around here first. There's a net. Can we go down to the end of this pier at all? Well, I suppose it's more of a jetty than a pier, isn't it? Oh yeah, it looks like we can. <gasps> There's a kid here. And a boat. Alright, let's talk to this kid. The animation weirdly well, looks so like it runs out here. I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means... Uh... Well, it, it's just a name. <laughs> Alright, let's ask some questions. Is it true that Captain Ketch lived around here? That's right. That's his house up on the hill. It's a museum now. Yeah? That's exactly what I need. Thanks, kid. You won't get inside, you know. The old ladies close it down. Oh, okay. Let's ask more. What do you know about Captain Ketch? Just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. 
No school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of competition. All right. Who are these old ladies you mentioned? Miss Frost and Miss Mina Ketch. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Branson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They kind of regret it, you know. The man's a crook. Huh, okay, interesting. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. Oh, there is. There is. Don't you worry about that. I didn't know the first thing about sailing a dinghy. No. It was a seaworthy little craft, in bad need of a coat of paint, but spotlessly clean and maintained. All right, fine. Well, at least we know what the house is now. It is the, the old captain's actual house, so... It was a net left to dry in the sunshine. There was definitely something sparkling on the end of one of those flagpoles, though, so I'm guessing that's going to be important. I don't want a fishing net. Okay, we don't want a fishing net, apparently. Can we have a look at any of these plans? Will he allow us to do that? As in, will he move away? Or is he just going to stand here and be in the way all day now? So he's going to stand in the way. All right, well, let's go up to the house then. Hopefully those two ladies aren't going to block our way, but they more than likely will. All right, well, this is them, right? And they've got a cat. It's got, what's that, a ball of yarn or something? Hi, Want to play? Whoa. Whoa. Hey, cat. Watch where you're putting those claws. Okay, well, maybe that's going to be a puzzle of some sort. There's a ladder here. Oh, is that the glowing thing? One of these was glowing. All right, can we talk to these ladies? Let's talk to the ladies. I bet they won't let us in. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. Uh, let's ask about the cat first. Is that your cat? Yes, it is. It's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Strobart? No one in England talks like this. We do you like bet. cats. Especially Spit Roast. <laughs> can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great 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 grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yes, if it lets us get into this house, yes. Yes, I am. Uh, let's ask more. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins, one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Nice. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. Huh, very interesting. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. Yeah. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. Sounds pretty you accurate. Understand, Mr. Stobart, pretty accurate for what, what British that people did. That doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Yeah. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ in my book, that makes him a hit. <laughs> that is a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> what happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh no. He got away and returned to this island. To this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. Yeah, I mean, the history of um, sort of Britain and things, if you guys don't know, I mean, it's not really taught here in schools and things like that, to be honest with you. But yeah, um, if you don't know, that that is where a great quantity of Britain's wealth came from. So... Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. Yes, he was. They him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial. Just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. 
I bet he was a pirate. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure green-eyed envy. Yeah, I don't believe that. successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money. Trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark. And hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! Yeah, I mean, there's, there was a very fine line between privateering and piracy. That, that's what I will say about that particular statement. Letter of Mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. Hmm. Do we believe them? I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Why? Dirty little whelk. Nasty fishy boy. Seem direct that to us. Do, Mina. Seemed nice enough when we spoke to him. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only... What, eleven, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! Oh, I think I see where this is going. What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Stobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being <laughs> sarcastic. <laughs> All right, well, let's ask more. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. Fine. Be like that. Anyway, can we do anything with this ladder? I feel like we need to get up to... Is, is that the one that was glistening up there? The ladder extended easily. All right, well, let's... um. Oh, there's a door and a window. Can we go round to the side? No, we can't. It was a closed window. Can we look in the window? The window was locked. No, okay. Maybe we can look in that window. The house's windows looked out over the bay. The windows were way out of reach. I mean, there's a ladder there, George, so... You there? What are you doing? Pardon yeah. me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles. So, are they going to let us do this? I'm, are we helping Bronson? Sorry. Okay, so they're, they're not. They're not. Let's have a look at these. The flagpole had some sort of technical gadget on the end. Yeah, so we need to get to that. It was a flagpole. That. One of a pair. Okay, is there anything we could... Oh! Um... No, okay. Oh! Does the cat want the worm? The cat looked at me as if to say, Why have you brought a dead worm halfway around the world? Yeah, we I had no answer. We, we still don't know what we've got the worm for, but we will figure that out. I was going to say we could use the fish, but that of course is in Space Quest 6, so I'm getting my games confused a little bit. <laughs> I'm also playing that at the moment, so... Uh, Bronson, do you know anything about these two women up here who won't let us climb a ladder? Yeah, look, we can ask. What do you think of Rio? Fish boy? If he comes near me again, I'll throttle the little squirt. Calm down. What's he ever done to you? Sock me in the back of my skull with some kind of fish. That's <laughs> that sounds pretty funny, to be honest. Tell me about the two old ladies. Who? The Ketch sisters. Yeah. One of them's crazy as a coot, and the other will turn you to stone if you're not careful. What are you doing with the Theodolite? Surveying the old house. I got great plans for this place. Oh, yeah? You bet. Take a look around. What do you see? Paradise. I see opportunity. This place is ripe for development. I like it just the way it is. Yeah. And that's where we differ. You see, Mr. Stobart, I'm what you might call a man of vision. 
if you I say so. I see a great future for Ketch's Landing, and it all starts here, with that house. All right, well. Can I take a look at your plans? No way. What interest would they be to you, anyhow? I've always had a secret desire to be a surveyor. You have? Sure. Mm. I mean, you surveyors are just like the great explorers, aren't you? Of course. Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama, Chris Columbus. Maybe you don't sail uncharted seas or discover new continents, but you're okay in my book. Horseshit. You just stay away from those plans, you dear. Ah, it's worth a try. How do you survey a house like that? I put a target reflector on the end of one of the flagpoles up there on the That's house. what it I is. Sight on it from various locations through the theodolite, record the angles along the baseline, and triangulate them to give me the exact position of the target. Understand? Yeah. Why the end of the flagpole? Wouldn't it have been better on a corner of a wall or something? Are you a surveyor? Uh, no, my degree's in law. Then shut up. Catch you later, Bronson. Bronson's pretty rude, isn't he, guys? All right, then, well, we're going to leave it there because we're out of time. So, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, and Barry Aldridge for all the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.